Thanks, Ron. Michael Corrin is no stranger to most of you. A lot of you watch his uh, nightly talk show on Sun TV called The Arena. But for many years, he hosted The Michael Corrin Show on CTS, which is the, uh, the uh, network that was founded by Crossroads Christian Communications. His latest book, and he's, he's written, I think, 14? Mm, around that. Around that. I lose count. You lose count. Oh. <laughs> I, imagine losing count of the books you've written. Uh, I know exactly how many I've written, but you, you lose count. Anyway, heresy. There it is. Michael Corrin, heresy. The lies they spread about Christianity. Now, you are in the talk show uh, uh, subculture. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, have sometimes a fairly adversarial relationship with your guests. And it's been rumored, yes. Yeah, it has been rumored. Uh, you're an outspoken um, uh, um, commentator. You uh, are published in several newspapers uh, with, uh, is it a daily or a weekly column? Uh, well, I, about two a week. It's really a weekly column. So it's a weekly yeah. column. And so, you know, you, you really are on the cutting edge with generally very insightful uh, comments. Now, Thank you. heresy. Uh, I, I, I love it. A great book. So much to talk about, but I just just for the sake of you viewers who are thinking, boy, I, I even read Corn's uh, book. Uh, Jesus didn't exist. A Christianity is a later creation. There is no God. Bad things happen to good people, and if uh, and, and so on. The Da Vinci Code. All the clever people are atheists, or Christians are stupid. Hitler was a Christian. Christians and Christianity supported slavery. Christians are opposed to science. Christians oppose progress and change. Christians are obsessed with abortion. And what else can we throw at Christians? <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't do it, what will? I, 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 got, I got the impression um, that you're as mad as can be and you won't take it anymore. You know what it is? It, it's, it's years of being in radio and TV and writing columns and hearing every argument against Christianity that's out there. And whenever someone says, I've got a new argument against Christianity for you, I say, no, you haven't. I've heard every one. And... The problem is, look, most people are busy paying the bills, raising the kids, being good Canadians, good mm -hmm. people. They don't have the time to assemble this information to respond, to fight back. And what I've tried to do in this book is to assemble uh, arguments against uh, these horrible, toxic um, attacks that people can, can assimilate quite easily. So each chapter is only about seven, 8,000 words. You can, there are entire books written about each subject. But um, I mean, ju just the other day, there's a man called Dan Savage who began the It Gets Better campaign to stop bullying of, in th this case, of gay kids. Now, bullying is bad. I don't think it's the nature of the victim. It's the bullying that's bad. And there's a lot of propaganda involved here. However, he was speaking to a couple of thousand kids and he began to say the most obscene things about the Bible when the kids walked out, he abused them. But what he said was that the Bible is a handbook of slavery. It's a pro-slavery book. Well, there happens to be a chapter in that uh, yeah. book about slavery. It's yeah. not. When, when the New Testament says, okay, if you have a slave, thus implicitly allowing slavery, what it's really saying is, we can't get rid of slavery. This is the, the ancient world. Yeah. So if you have a slave, treat that slave like a son give him full rights of inheritance, love him. That's not being a slave. That's saying you're a slave, you're part of the family. But this man, he, d he doesn't bother to read it. He just comes out with propaganda. And most people accept that. Um, the Da Vinci Code, the number of people who've lost their faith because of that dreadful novel. A and, and Dan Brown's dishonest because although it's a novel, he always says, oh, it's just a novel. In the book, he implies that it's, it's actually nonfiction. It's true. Uh, allegedly clever people. Well, if Jesus existed, look, uh, my golly, uh, Pliny, Tacitus, Josephus, the list goes on, pagan or Jewish writers who did not believe he was the Messiah, but said, of course he existed. So you don't have to be a genius to, to contradict their arguments. And, and well, you've heard this more often than I have. Well, if, the, if God is love, why does he allow bad things to happen to good people? Look, and good things happen to bad people. Mm. It's even more annoying. He, he, that guy won the, won the, the, the lottery. I yeah. can't stand that guy. Right. That is a problem for the atheist, not for the Christian. They believe at death we are dust, food for worms. We believe our end is our beginning. Real life hasn't begun yet. This is just a land of shadows. So the child with cancer, the, the philanthropist dying at the age of, of 40, that's a problem for the atheist. We know God didn't guarantee a good life. He guaranteed a perfect eternity. So just being able to respond to, to, to these people with these arguments, you, not everyone is there to be an apologist, but we should, Scripture tells us, be able to, to give a fair, good, reasoned defense of our faith. Yeah, for sure, a reason for the hope that lies within us. Uh, one, one of your chapters is on, um, the, uh, what, what do you, uh, let, me, let me just, uh, all the clever people are atheists. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or Christians are stupid. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's spend a little time on that one, because uh, this sort of neo-atheism has been, 
pretty hot, you know, over the last five years or so, Dawkins yeah. and Hitchens, and, and the, you mentioned uh, the Da Vinci Code and others. Um, the implication is that if you have your brain in gear, mm. you're an atheist. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about some remarkable people with their brains in gear who were men and women of faith. Uh, and, and, and you're expert on these, uh, people like C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, and you've written books about them, mm -hmm. Dorothy Sayers yeah. and Malcolm Muggeridge. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, Lewis, for instance. Well, Lewis, uh, just a, a wonderful man. He, uh, he died in 1963, the same day as Kennedy. Mm. He was one of the finest public intellectuals, if you like, one of the great minds of his generation, a professor at both Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, he was revered within the scholarship of, of English literature. And he, he also became a Christian and wrote the most wonderful books. I mean, if people haven't read them, go and buy them today after they buy my book. <laughs> uh, but you know, Mere Christianity, The Screw Tape Letters, The Narnia Chronicles, Surprised by Joy, Miracles, Letters on Prayer. He was a wonderful man. He was a marvelous first-class mind. But look, there, it's not about intelligence. I've met clever and stupid Christians. Mm. I've met clever and stupid atheists. What I resent and refuse to accept is this notion that if you're intelligent, you have to reject God. And I debate atheists a lot, particularly down in New York, where the people I've heard are fairly aggressive. And <laughs> they always begin with this, honestly, they always begin with, you can believe what you want. You can believe in the tooth fairy, Santa, Jesus, I don't care. I never let them go beyond that, because what they're trying to do is say, your, 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 your view is dim, is dumb, it's like that of a child. No. If someone goes beyond the age of, I don't know, nine or ten, and they still believe in Santa, well, you assume some sort of mental retardation, perhaps. If someone is a Christian at nine or ten, you say, that's interesting, but you'll never really fully grasp him until you're older, which is where you get Lewis and Thomas Aquinas and Cardinal Newman and Dostoevsky, and the list go on. So don't place us in this little corner. Debate us on a level playing field. Don't claim we're stupid simply because we disagree with you. And that's what's happened today. It's not saying, I disagree with a Christian. I'll argue with them. It's saying, I disagree with Christians. I want them to be silenced. Well, you know me well enough. I won't shut up. I'm not going to be silenced. And... What I've tried to do in the book is also be a bit amusing at times, funny, approachable, but just reassure Christians we don't have to run away when these arguments are made by the allegedly clever people. We have not only the truth on our side, but we have wisdom on our side as well.